This presentation is about testing generative models, in particular variational not encoders, for the design of shell structures. My name is Gabriel Mira and I'm a PhD student at the University of Melbourne in Australia. I'm presenting on behalf of both authors. I would like to introduce the topic of this talk by comparing how design spaces are constructed using conventional approaches based on problem solving versus an approach based on learning. This first slide illustrates the conventional problem-solving approach, which is a very common way of constructing design spaces within a computational model and parametric design. This approach is based on the definition of a limited number of design variables, which are formal expressions of a design idea. This is a parametric definition that constrains designers to search for the solution within a well-defined family of structural shapes. It's an approach that has intrinsic limits, as none of the possible combination of design variables will never be able to return a solution that falls outside the domain of the initially defined idea. To overcome this problem, I'm going to propose you a different approach to structural design, which consists in using artificial intelligence and developing a computational model that can learn design variables from a dataset of design precedents. With AI, variables are used by the model to automatically construct the design space, which is expected to include a broader spectrum of solutions. Before getting into the details of the application, just a brief introduction on AI. When talking about AI, we usually refer to a specific class of models named artificial neural networks. These models can learn patterns from visual data. Depending on the model architecture, these patterns are used to perform different tasks. On the top, you can see a typical implementation which allows the model to learn patterns from input data, in this case images, to classify such data. This application results in data compression. On the bottom, you can see a different implementation in which the pipeline is reversed. Here the model learns to construct visual patterns from low-level information. These patterns are then combined to generate new data samples. This application results in data expansion. The model chosen for this application is Variational Autoencoder. It combines both architectures to construct a design space starting from X samples of design precedents. The first part of the model, named Encoder, learns patterns from the given design examples and compresses the information into variables describing a Latin space, here considered as the equivalent of a design space. The second part, named Decoder, learn to construct new data starting from combination of variables of the latter space. This slide shows the flowchart of this application, which is structured in three separate stages. First, a dataset is artificially constructed by means of a parametric model. Second, variational autoencoder is trained using such dataset and evaluation is done by analyzing the quality of reconstructed data samples and characteristics of the learned design space. Last, I show you the implementation, which consists in using the trained model to generate new structural designs. The dataset of shell structures was constructed from a parametric model. The design variables are represented on the left and are 1. the respective position of the shell openings, 2. the distance of the openings from the pre-assigned center of the shell, 3. the sides of the openings, and 4. the curvature of the support edges. Once variables were defined, a dynamic relaxation algorithm was used to generate a 3D model, as shown on the right. In the following stages, I show how 3D models are converted into a data format readable by variational autoencoder. On the left, a uniform square grid of 64 by 64 points is projected onto the 3D model and the height of the projected points is collected. These values are then used to generate an image representing a depth map, which is shown on the right. This is an animation showing how the dataset is constructed through a grasshopper script. First, the algorithm generates a random combination of variables which control the boundary curves of the shell. These curves are then used as input for the dynamic relaxation to construct a 3D model. Finally, the 3D model is converted into a depth map and the image saved on the local hard drive. This is an overview of the 800 3D models, represented as depth maps, constructed with the Grasshopper script. You can also see that the dataset includes three categories of shell structures, the first one with two openings or three edges, the second one with three openings, and the third one with four openings. 
Once the dataset is ready, we can start training variational autoencoder. Training works this way. Firstly, you feed the model with the random data samples taken from the dataset, which are shown on the left. Then, you let the model perform two different tasks. Number one, compress the input data, that means extracting the sign variables, those shown in the graph at the center of the diagram, and number two, decompress the design variables to reconstruct the original input, which is shown on the right. Over several iterations, the variational encoder learns to extract increasingly more useful variables and to reuse them to reconstruct increasingly finer details of the input data. This slide shows several plots of the design variables learned by variational encoder during the training process. Each graph corresponds to a training iteration and illustrates the position of the combinations of variables describing the, all the 800 depth maps populating the dataset. It is worth noting that each depth map is compressed into 10 variables, yet we are visualizing points in a 2D representation. This is obtained by using t-distributed stochastic neighbor embedding, which is an algorithm for dimensionality reduction. Points color identifies the category of the 3D model represented by the depth map, that is shells with two, three or four openings. It can be seen that although the model has no information about these categories, it successfully learned meaningful variables which embed information about the number of openings. This is demonstrated by the formation of three clusters in the latent space. An additional property of this space is that it can be simple to generate new data, similarly to a conventional design space. This is a first implementation of the trained model for the generation of new designs. On the left, you can see a representation of the latent space with four numbers, which identify the position of four designs taken from the dataset. The variables describing these designs are linearly interpolated to create new combination of variables, which are shown as gray dots along linear paths. These new combinations of variables are then decompressed into new designs, shown on the right. This second implementation demonstrates that, besides interpolation, the model allows to perform any sort of mathematical manipulation, starting from an initial combination of variables. In this example, the variables describing an initial design were randomly perturbated by adding noise vectors with different radii, or amplitudes. This transformation allows to explore variations starting from an existing design. In this third example, the input is not given in the form of variables, but rather through another image, which represents a potential design footprint. This time, the objective of the model is extracting relevant patterns from a previously unseen form of representation and generating a new design. The result demonstrates how variational encoder is able to generate solutions significantly different from the examples it has been shown during training and can escape the bounds of the given dataset. So far, I have covered how variational autoencoders can generate that maps starting from a dataset of precedents. In this slide, I want to show you that that maps retain all the information necessary to construct a 3D model, and that the conversion can be performed easily within any commercial CAD software. In conclusion, this preliminary test aims to illustrate how AI models can be implemented in computational structural design. I would like to share a few comments that can be drawn from this first test. First, variational autoencoders can extract design variables from a dataset of precedents and they use such variables for the generation of new designs. This means that these models can construct design spaces. Second, the designs generated by variational autoencoder present the main features of the data populating the dataset, but show also new features, which emerge from the interpretative capabilities of the model. Therefore, the design space constructed by a variational autoencoder is richer in terms of variety of solutions compared to a design space constructed with a conventional approach. The design space constructed by the model could be explored with optimization techniques such as genetic algorithms to search for potentially innovative structural designs that maximize a given performance. Lastly, the dataset used for this preliminary test was constructed through a parametric model and thus represents a limited class of solutions. An application of variational autoencoder based on a dataset of real shell spatial structures will be presented at the ISS 2020 conference. Feel free to contact me via email or visit my website should you have any questions relating to this presentation. I would also welcome very much anyone who is interested in potential collaborations and discussions on this topic. Thank you all for listening.